create glowing 3D text and beautiful effects using only non-destructive Photoshop techniques. This tutorial will show you how to create 3D text using Photoshop's Repousse tool, give it a futuristic blue glow, and finish it off with a modern bokeh and grid background. To follow this tutorial, you'll need Photoshop CS5 Extended. Before we begin this tutorial, make sure you have the required fonts installed. These fonts are available free and the links to them can be found in the video description. You'll also need the extended version of Photoshop CS5, not the regular version. After you've installed the fonts, start by creating a new document in Photoshop. Go to File, New. Set the width to 1920, height to 1080, and then click OK. Make the background black. You can do this quickly by pressing Ctrl-I or Command-I on a Mac to invert the color. Select the Text tool, then type in any text you like using the TR2N font. It's best to use something around 4 characters. I'll be writing TR2N with a font size of 480 point. Make sure you have the TR2N text layer selected, then go to 3D, Repousse, Text Layer. You'll get a pop-up that asks if you want to rasterize the text. Just click Yes. If you don't see the 3D menu, you might not be using Photoshop CS5 Extended. There are two versions of Photoshop, and the 3D tools are only available in Photoshop CS5 Extended, not the regular one. The Repousse tool will appear with many settings you can adjust. Start by reducing the depth value so that the thickness of your 3D text looks similar to this. You can press the up and down arrows on your keyboard to do this. In the Materials area, click on the drop-down menu, then choose the Sphere with no texture. This will remove all the textures from your text. Go to the Bevel settings. Set the sides to Front, Height to 5, Width to 0.5, and Contour to this Deep Cove Contour. Click OK to apply the changes. We're done creating the 3D text. Now that we're done, we can allow Photoshop to improve the quality of the 3D text. If you look at the edge of your 3D text, you'll see that it's pretty low quality. Photoshop does this to improve the performance while you're editing. Once you're done editing, you can change the quality and have Photoshop render a higher quality image. To do this, go to Window, 3D to bring up the 3D panel. In the Quality drop-down menu, select Ray Traced Final. Photoshop will now render the 3D text and you'll see a blue grid moving across your image. This takes some time to process depending on your computer speed. If you press anything, Photoshop will pause the render. To resume, just right-click on the layer and choose Resume Progressive Render. Let this run until the text quality looks good enough to you. When the text quality looks good enough, simply click anywhere to stop the render. Now we're going to apply some layer styles to give it a glow. Right-click on the TR2N layer, then choose Blending Options. Select the Color Overlay option, then set the Blending Mode to Overlay and Color to 00B4FF. Select the Outer Glow Layer style, then set the color to the same color we used earlier, 00B4FF. Set the size to around 30 pixels. Note that the effects of the setting will vary if you used a different font size. Click OK to apply the changes. We're done with the 3D text. Here's how our image looks like so far. We're now going to create the subtitle. Select the text tool and type some text below the TR2N text. I use the font Railway. If you have the new Helvetica 35 Thin font, you can use that instead. It's the same font that was in the movie Tron, but it's not free. If you want to increase the spacing between the letters, go to Window, Character, then adjust the spacing value. Make sure you have the text highlighted when adjusting the setting. If you need to, use the Move tool to reposition your text. Next, we're going to apply a blue glow to the subtitle. Because we did this earlier, we can copy the layer style settings from the logo and paste it into the subtitle. To do this, right-click on the TR2N layer and click Copy Layer Style. Now, right-click on the subtitle layer and click Paste Layer Style. Double-click on the outer glow layer style to edit it. Reduce the size to something like this. Select the color overlay style, then change the blending mode to normal. Click OK to apply the changes. We're done with the text. 
Just having some 3D text on a black background is boring, so we're going to create a cool grid background and top it off with some bokeh. Let's start with the grid background. This grid background is pretty cool because it uses only smart filters, and you can create unlimited variations with two clicks. You'll see how this works in a bit. First, let's create the grid background. Create a new layer and position it above the background layer. Rename this layer to Grid Background. Right-click on the layer, then choose Convert to Smart Object. By converting the layer into a smart object, we can apply smart filters, which lets us edit the settings anytime we like. Now we're going to apply this secret combination of filters to create the grid background. First, make sure your foreground and background colors are set to the default black and white colors. You can reset the foreground and background colors by pressing D on your keyboard. Go to Filter, Render, Clouds. You'll get a cloudy background like this. Next, we're going to turn the clouds into a mosaic pattern. Go to Filter, Pixelate, Mosaic. Set the cell size to 40 square, then click OK. To give the mosaic pattern some round corners, we're going to use the Median filter. Go to Filter, Noise, Median. Set the radius to 8 pixels, then click OK. Now we're going to give the mosaic pattern some glowing edges. Go to Filter, Stylize, Glowing Edges. Set the edge width to 1 edge brightness to 10, and smoothness to 1, then click OK. In the Layers palette, double-click on the Blending Options button for the Glowing Edges filter in the Layers palette. A Blending Options window will appear. Set the Blending Mode to Screen, Opacity to 50%, then click OK. To complete the effect, we're going to increase the contrast effort using the Black Clip setting. Usually, we would use the Levels or Curves tool for this, but it doesn't work on Smart Objects. Instead, we're going to use the Shadows and Highlights tool. Go to Image, Adjustments, Shadows Highlights. Set the two settings to 0%, then enable the Show More Options checkbox. There is a black clip setting here, but it's grayed out. To get around this, just set the shadows to 1%. Now the black clip setting is enabled. You can adjust this setting to increase the black areas in your grid background. You can also adjust the white clip setting if you want to increase the white areas. I'm just going to set the black clip to 10%. When you're done, click OK to apply the changes. Reduce the opacity of this layer to around 12%. We're done! Here's what the grid background looks like. Before we move on to the bokeh effect, let me show you something cool with this background. Go into the Layers palette and double-click on the Cloud Smart Filter. A pop-up will appear. You might want to checkmark the Don't Show Again option so that you don't keep seeing this pop-up. Click OK and your grid background pattern will change into a new one. You can keep double-clicking on the Cloud Smart Filter as many times to get the pattern you like. The last effect you're going to add is a bokeh effect. Create a new layer and position it above the grid background layer. Name this layer Bokeh. Select the Brush tool, then right-click anywhere on the document to bring up the brush settings. Pick this brush here. It should be a round brush with a 100% hardness. Set the size to 200px. If you don't see this brush, you can click on the Flyout menu and click Reset Brushes. Go to Window, Brushes. Enable the Shape Dynamics option, then set the size jitter to 100%. Make sure your control option is set to off. Next, enable the Scattering option, then checkmark the Both Axes option, and set the scatter to 1000%. Make sure your control setting is off. Count 1 and count jitter 0%. Enable the Color Dynamics option, then set the Hue jitter to 3%. Select the Transfer option, then set the Opacity Jitter to 100%. Finally, click on the Brush Tip Shape and enable Spacing. Set the Spacing to 100%. We're done setting up the brush. Now we can start painting. First, set your foreground color to white. You can do this quickly by pressing D on your keyboard to reset your colors, then X to switch the foreground and background colors. Paint around the image. You'll get a bunch of randomly created circles. You may have to undo by pressing Ctrl, Command plus C, and retry the painting several times before getting one that you like. Next, go to Image, Adjustments, Q, Saturation. Check mark the Colorize option, then adjust the settings to get the color you like. Here are the settings we used. Right-click on the bokeh layer, then choose Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to 16 pixels, then click OK. Double-click on the Gaussian Blur Smart Filter Blending Options button. 
set the opacity to 80%, then click OK. We're almost done. Here's what the image looks like. The bokeh effect can be a little distracting around the logo, so we're going to mask it out. In the Layers palette, click on the New Layer Mask button. Select the Eraser tool. Make sure you have the default foreground and background colors. You can press D on your keyboard to reset your colors. Right-click anywhere in the Document window to bring up the Eraser Brush settings, then select the Soft Round Brush. Set the size to around 800 pixels. Erase around the logo and anywhere else to hide the bokeh. We're done! If you want to change the colors up a bit, you can fill the background layer with any color you like. You can also use the Hue and Saturation tool by going to Image, Adjustments, Hue, Saturation. Check mark the Colorize option, then adjust the settings as you like. You can make it white, blue, or leave it black. Here's the final results. Write us a comment and let us know how this went for you. Don't forget to download the Photoshop file from our website. You can find this link in the video description. Subscribe to us for more great Photoshop tutorials.